Hi, this is a new uh, medium for me. Uh, drive and think, drive and reflect. I uh, just wanted to cut this video uh, today thinking on the report of the Lord. Uh, you know, you might have heard it said, what, what world are you living in? We are all living in, in a sense, different worlds. And, um, you know, according to scripture, when sin entered this world, when we decided on ourselves over God, um, sin rushed into the game. Death was marked. We were now mortal. We had exchanged the eternal for the mortal. And that was... Uh, a transaction we had made. God had said, if you eat of this fruit, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. The devil said, you're not going to die. You're going to become like the gods. And so we had the report of the Lord saying, you're going to die. We had the report of the devil saying, you're going to live. You're going to be a deity. God said, you're going to be nothing. Uh, and uh, the devil said, you're going to be a god. And we said, um, We'll go with the devil's report. And we chose self, and we still do to this day, every day. And uh, this is the uh, whole cosmic story of God put into action. So he said, I'm going to come again, God with man again, Emmanuel. Isaiah 7, 14, Isaiah 9, 1 to 7, all the messianic prophecies, Isaiah 53, the whole chapter just will blow you away. Uh, God said, I'm going to put a, a rescue plan and mission. I'm coming after you. God with man again, like God in the garden. Uh, God who treads the heights, Amos 4.13. Uh, God with us, Isaiah 7.14. And then we have in um, Bethlehem, we have Jesus Christ born. It says in Colossians 2.9, the fullness of the deity in bodily form. God now amongst men. And Jesus came and he made it clear. Uh, John 10.9 is a verse that just uh, is with me every day. Um, Jesus said, it's one of the great I am's in, in the Gospel of John. There's seven famous I am's, I think, seven. John 10, 9, Jesus said, I am the door. He who comes through me will be saved. And he will go in and he will go out and find pasture. Jesus came, the fullness of the deity in bodily form. He came and he said, I am a door. I am your door. You come through me and you will be saved. This is the door back into paradise. This is the door back into Eden. But it isn't just hereafter. It's it's the door. Jesus said in John 6, 63, my, my words are spirit and they are life. Jesus came to give us life here and now. Uh, John 5, 24, he said, he who hears my voice, believes him who sent me, has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Jesus came as a door in, in the here and now, and, and then to be fully consummated later. Uh, Romans 8, 15, uh, Paul writes about how we are adopted as sons, but then in verse 23, I mean eight verses later, uh, Paul writes about how we eagerly await our adoption. Uh, and he refers to the redemption of our bodies. So it is here and now we are marked by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. We are marked by the Holy Spirit. But uh, we, we, we also await the fullness of, of the experience of uh, being with God in paradise. Um, so it is here and now we go through the door of Jesus Christ. And it is there and then we experience the full consummation of it. Jesus said, now this is what I really want to hone in on today. Matthew 6, 23, Jesus talks about the eye being the lamp of the body. And he says, anyone whose eye is good, the body is full of light. But he said, if the light, if the eyes are bad, the body's full of darkness. And then he went on and said, if the light in you is darkness, 
How great is that darkness? There is a way to see. Now, this is really what was was uh, uh, in my heart and mind today. There is a way to see life. First of all, we see light. John 1.9. Uh, John writes of Jesus. He said, the true light, because there is false light. 2 Corinthians 11.14. The, the devil masquerades as an angel of light. There is false light light. But John says of Jesus, the true light that gives light to all mankind was coming into the world. We uh, first see the true light. And you might be in a very, very dark dungeon today. And really the call on your life right now is to see the true light, to, to say, okay, I have seen many lights, bright lights, neon lights, but I see the true light of Jesus Christ and I'm gonna fix my eyes on that light and I'm gonna go to that light. Your path will be ever brighter, Proverbs 4.18. Uh, so we need to see the true light and make a, a, a declaration. We need, to, we need to claim we are going to the light. And then as we walk in the light, there is a new floor at our feet. There's a new infrastructure of truth and reality. Jesus speaking, John 6, 23, the eyes, the lamp of the body, the light, if the light in you is darkness. So now we have a new light, the light of Jesus Christ. So now we see life through that light. That is very important. Um, two people can be seeing the same thing and one person is seeing it as the as the report of God and someone else has just seen it through their own eyes and this is this is very important how do you see life do, do you take God take him captive and then put him through the sieve of your life and your understanding and you say this is what's real I'm gonna I see what's real and I factor God in and, and you're tacking him on to the back of your understanding or do we take captive life, 2 Corinthians 3, oh, sorry, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. It, it, Paul says, we take captive thoughts and make them subject to Christ. In other words, we can be looking at something and you can say, does God make sense in this? Or you can look at it and say, does this make sense in God? In other words, God is... Exodus 3.14, his report about life is what is true. My eyes can deceive me. My heart can deceive me, 1 John 3.20. But God's report stands true. And I'm going to take what I see, and I'm going to take what I feel, and I'm going to take what I need, and I'm going to take what I want, and I'm going to make it subject to God's report because his report is true. I'm going to take me captive. I'm going to take my thoughts captive, and I'm going to put them through the report of God. And what comes out, comes out. That That is how we can do life. So money, money can be something that that signifies bad decisions in your life. You can be very, very wealthy and you look at your money and that money has cost your soul. It has cost your relationships. It has cost love. Or money can be something that God has blessed you with. Luke 19 speaks of the master giving money in differing degrees to different people and one guy saw the money as something unspiritual when actually no, it was it was from God and of God and had a purpose in God. And he, he came up with all these plausible arguments about why not to put this money to use. And when he came to account, the master said, you are a wicked and selfish servant. You're not a, a shrewd, uh, humanistic, uh, uh, good uh, philosopher. No, he, God tapped into a motive of the heart that made this man not even see the money as God's money and from God. So money, even money, you could be looking at it and you can be saying, is this a good thing from the provision of God? Psalm 24, 1, the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Or you could be looking at money going, this is from the devil. And, and you know what? It can be both. And you know what? Everything in life can be either or. And that is why we need to calibrate the, the, the light with which we see. That is why we need to strive to enter God's rest, Hebrews 4.11. We need to see life and ask God to help us to see life 
within the framework of his dimensions and his report. And uh, because there will always be another way to interpret it. Always. And, and you can go, it's not the more spiritual explanation is the God one. It's the more uh, spirit-led explanation and, and vision and uh, uh, parameters that are, are God's parameters. It's not, it's not the super spiritual because the devil is super spiritual. It, it's, it's keeping in step with the Spirit of God, Galatians 5.25. And uh, so how, how do we see life? How do we do life? What's your real? What's the floor? What is your real floor? What is your highest law? What is, what is your uh, most guiding voice? Uh, what is your real? What does it pivot on? Who does it stand on? Uh, does it stand on the, the, the parameters and the politics, the thoughts and the cultures of this age? Or does it stand on the report of God through His Word and the leading and presence of the Spirit of God in your life right now? What is your real? With what light are you seeing life now and in this situation and in this relationship? God bless you. I'm going to hang this up.